to understand what Bitcoin is actually trying to solve, it's useful to look at a, a simplified payment system and what we might want from it. And then we can look at how Bitcoin tries to address those wants. So we have six friends here. Let's say Alice sends Bobby a burrito. And Bobby wants to pay Alice back. So Bobby, uh, let's say, just gives her some physical cash. And the, the problem is kind of solved here. In the physical world, when you have a physical item of value and you give it away, you no longer have it. And Alice, the person you gave it to, has it now. So there is that transfer of value that you want. Now, in the digital world, this isn't as straightforward. In the digital world, it's very cheap to copy data. So Bobby uh, can't just send some zeros and ones, some data represented in bits, and say, hey, all my value is actually just those zeros and ones, uh, because Bobby can copy those zeros and ones and essentially is still retaining that the, the virtual object while giving a copy to Alice. So one thing I want to um, make clear is that Bitcoin isn't special because it's digital. We already have a lot of existing digital systems. We have Venmo, PayPal, Square. Our banks offer digital payments. So all these friends can pay each other without Bitcoin through the digital realm. And what makes the digital payment systems work when you have this problem where you can't just say, hey, I'm exchanging something and that physical object is no longer here with me. So that exchange, you know, there's, there's, no, there's no way I can kind of keep the object, but at the same time, give it to somebody, is that the payment system for the digital is based on record keeping instead of just transferring a physical object. Um, so if Bobby had uh, $20 and there's some record keeper that says, hey, when you gave Alice $10, this becomes 10, then we kind of know that, okay, uh, there was uh, an appropriate deduction to Bobby and an appropriate addition to Alice's account. Now, the um, people who are responsible for this record keeping are the trusted institutions such as banks and uh, institutions, financial institutions like banks, and we trust them to properly keep account of how much uh, we have and to properly do deductions and uh, additions. So here's my, my best drawing of a bank, even though banks kind of don't look like this anymore. Nice. So these uh, middlemen essentially help us keep account and Bobby would send the request to pay to Alice to the bank. The bank would deduct from his records and then send to Alice or change Alice's account and then notify Alice, hey, your account has been updated by $10. Alice knows that Bobby has paid her for the burrito. So this may seem kind of straightforward. Um, what's wrong with this digital system? Why do we need Bitcoin when we already have this digital system? Now, the thing is, uh, one bank isn't connected to all individuals around the world. There are different bank networks. So let's say Jim and Scott belong to this bank network. Eliza and Jessica belong to this bank network. Bobby belongs to this bank network. And these bank networks communicate with each other in order to make these records consistent. So there are a lot of... Um, complications and challenges along this way, and banks have to work to make sure these records aren't uh, inconsistent. Um, so for instance, if you know the record has changed here, but something fails along the way, the record isn't changed here, then everything needs to potentially be reversed. You don't want some banks to think that, oh, the account for so-and-so has X amount, when another bank says, no, it has X plus one. So the actual process to transfer from one individual to another can go through a bunch of intermediaries and um, this can cause some time delay and also may incur some cost for the banks performing this job of making sure things are consistent and safe. 
And now this is uh, made even uh, potentially more problematic if you know, you're transferring over borders. So let's say Scott and Jessica are in the country of La La Land and they have strict financial governance rules. Um, in order for banks outside of the country to send within the country, they have to follow certain guidelines. Maybe some countries are sanctioning La La Land because La La Land behaved inappropriately. Um, and uh, this chain of sending from one kind of institution to an institution within La La Land may involve government institutions, more banks, and this could create a higher time delay and also potentially more costs. So that's kind of the issue with all these different uh, middlemen in between. The people rely on these financial institutions to provide the infrastructure for payments to flow through. These financial institutions have the crucial role of maintaining law and order and making sure payments are abiding by government regulations. The issue here is that in many countries, often in developing nations, the financial sector isn't developed enough where people can actually trust the financial institutions. Uh, they believe that there might be corruption on the governmental level or the corporate level. And historically, the corruption has been real and has happened. So that has eroded people's trust in these uh, authorities that they need to rely on for payments to go through. So here we have a decentralized uh, network represented as a graph. Uh, these, are, these nodes can be people or businesses. And essentially, uh, you just want to get maybe a payment from one node to another without some central authority. So digital systems um, for payments rely on record keeping. And how do we keep a record if there's no authority? So let's just play with the idea that maybe everybody has their own record. Okay, and this is node A, node B, and let's say A wants to send a payment to B of $5. And maybe A had 10 before, and it, uh, he adjusts his record to five, and B had uh, 20, and now B has 25. Uh, let me correct this, okay, 25. So B also does the same thing, and in a sense, record has been kept. They know their amount. A has now five, B has 25. Uh, but the issue here is that, you know, in this transaction, only two people, two of these nodes were involved. Nobody else knows that A's uh, account worth has changed. So if A then sends a transaction for 10 here, how does, let's call this node C, how does C know that A, um, has sufficient funds, uh, would C just have to trust A's record keeping? Uh, so this is called the double spend problem. It's where a person might spend some amount uh, two or more times. And to solve this, what we might do is to broadcast all transactions so that everybody knows each transaction that happens. And each node can compute by themselves, okay, this transaction is valid because based on this arithmetic that I'm doing to calculate how much A has, it all checks out. So uh, let's, let's, let's do that, yeah. A broadcasts uh, its transaction to B to all nodes, and then they all update their respective records. So that's one step towards addressing uh, this problem. The double spend problem seems to be, at least in, in, in the abstract case, has been addressed. People, you know, if, if uh, people were all great and uh, there's no potential for bugs, there's no potential for bad activity. Uh, this might work where everyone uh, knows each transaction, double spend problem is kind of solved. But now in the real world, we do have issues where there are in there's intentional or unintentional corruption of data. So let's say, you know, A says, hey, I'm... Um, I, even though I broadcasted to everybody my amount, I'm going to say, I, I'm going to edit my records. And this is the, the evil. This is the evil uh, record. I have $100. I'm rich. Um, in this case, everybody's like, no, 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 wait, wait. Uh, B 
based on our records and the transaction history, you actually only have five dollars. Uh, how do we reconcile this this uh, clash of records? What if A got his friends to all say, "Nope, A has a hundred dollars. You guys are wrong." Maybe one way to address this is truth by majority. Um, if this were a huge network with you know hundreds of millions of people on it, it'd be tough for A potentially to get enough friends to agree with him that he does have a hundred dollars, and the majority would find the truth. But that's not quite robust enough.、Uh, it still feels a little bit fragile. We'll see what we can do about this in the next part.